Now, um, you mentioned about um, enjoying acad the uh, not the academic side, but the writing side of your work. Uh, how do you any advice to hand out to people who are just starting to produce popular anthropology? I think it's. I would advise anyone to, going back to what I'm saying about playing to your strengths and weaknesses and tone. Tone is very, very important, I think, in popular anthropology. And then I would advise anyone to look at what they're good or bad at, look at what their interests are, and look at what their strengths are. And instead of trying to say, what is the, mar the so-called anthropological marketplace looking for, to say, well, what can I bring to that marketplace? Uh, the most important thing in anthropology, be it popular or unpopular anthropology, is confidence and having a self-confidence in one's work and what one's doing and the contribution. I don't know where confidence comes from and I can't advise people what kind of a course one can go on to be confident. The only advice I can give is when you wake up in the morning, decide that you are self-confident. And be self-confident, because it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Confidence allows you to say, these are my strengths, this is what I do well, and this is what I'm interested in. And then go and do that. And hope and have the confidence that you will find an audience for that. The most important thing and advice I give you with any talk or concern of popular anthropology is audience. Popular anthropology is produced for some audience somewhere. So be mindful of the audience. If you like what you're doing yourself, you'll find another person out there, unless you're a complete weirdo, who will like it. Um, I don't want everyone in society to like what I'm doing. I just want 98.7% of them to like it on a good day. But seriously, if one in ten people in the world likes what I'm doing, I would be amazingly popular. If one in a thousand people liked it, I would still be popular. If one in a million people liked it with all the billions of us, I would still be popular. So it's not that difficult to be popular. If you're writing a traditional ethnography that um, only four people including your supervisor, your mother and yourself are reading, then you're not thinking about an audience. My audience is a more intelligent, witty and sublime version of me. And I try to write for him. And uh, then I think that works. Uh, people don't like, not everyone likes what I do, but if enough people like it. Um, writing comes out of having confidence, um, knowing what you're able to do and doing it. And I can't do um, serious developmental stuff. If I was put in charge of saving the environment, the human race would be wiped out within six months tops. So they're not my strengths. Um, and my Popular anthropology is most popular in Germany at the moment, so I found a popular audience there. And I share one thing with the Germans, we take our humour very, very seriously. Um, and that's my strength. Um, if you're not humorous, then don't try to be, because it will be a tragedy. If you're serious, do seriously popular anthropology, and there are a lot of serious people out there who find an audience. Um, keep away from jargon, um, everything that can be said, even about the most sophisticated things, um, can be said simply. And practice on lay people, you know, explaining what your ideas are and articulating your ideas on people who don't have a background in anthropology. Never ever use the word anthropology unless you're being explicitly interviewed about it. I tell people that anthropology is the study of ants, and I'm very happy with that, and that's what they think. Popular anthropology is the study of popular ants. Um, and I think, I look forward to a future where 
anthropology regains the ground that psychology, which let's face it, is a dismal, narrow and pedestrian activity has gained because it's now underpinning TV drama. You've got forensic psychologists. Um, and Freud has done so much for psychology in popularising it. We need a Freud, somebody who ignites a curiosity in a genuine way about the great mysteries of culture. I think all of the interesting stuff in the world goes on outside our heads. Psychologists have persuaded us that it's going on inside our head and that's far too selfish for me. My anthropology supervisor told me one thing which has made um, my anthropology popular. He said psychologists gaze at their own navels. Anthropologists gaze at other people's navels, which is both more salacious and interesting. Um, and I think that's how to be popular. Be an anthropologist if you have a genuine interest in other people, which is an interest that's greater than the interest you have in yourself. Um, and I think that's what anthropologists do. Um, I like other people. Um, not in huge doses, I think I'm a bit of a hermit, but I like studying them. And uh, I love sitting on a bus, eaves I was eavesdropping on two people having a fight recently and they said to me, are you eavesdropping on us? And I said, yes, of course I am. I'm an anthropologist, that's what we do. And they're like, oh, uh. Psychologists have learned to invade popular culture, drama, cinema, books. So anthropologists must learn to do that. And that's what I am doing, invading popular culture. And I think anthropologists must enjoy um, interacting with people. It's what we study, you know, people are endlessly fascinating. And I think if you cannot write interestingly about people, then you shouldn't be in the business, you know, either of unpopular anthropology or popular anthropology. Um, Find the confidence, enjoy it. Um, I love research, uh, whether it's on the bus or on the internet or hanging out at funerals or weddings. It's great to go to a wedding you haven't been invited to. Just have a notebook and say, yeah, I'm studying you. Um, and not, I think you have to come at the culture at right angles. Um, when you go to a wedding, you have to realize it's not about love, you know. Of course they love each other, maybe they do, I don't know. But it's about something else. And that's what we anthropologists look for and that's what we write about. And that's what's fun. Um, and the stuff I find is extra fun, because I think I always, I started writing about the anthropology of marriage by really being convinced that if two people loved each other, they wouldn't get married. Um, and I think it's really interesting now with all the stuff um, in the media about gay marriage. I think it's obviously a sign that gay couples don't love each other as much as they used to, that they're now obsessed with becoming married. And I say, knock yourselves out if that's what you want. Um, imagination, confidence, curiosity about the human condition. And if you've no curiosity about the human condition, then you shouldn't be in anthropology. And curiosity is the most important thing for me. I always say to students, think about evolutionism and creationism. I don't believe in either, but I love creationism. It's got nudity, snakes, gender war, you know, a short-tempered God. Um, it's a great story. And I think if you haven't got a curiosity about the Garden of Eden, then it's really disappointing. I love whoever invented that story. Well, yes, God did. But apart from that, I just think it's, it's great fun. Evolutionism is important, but it's less fun. It tells us less about ourselves. Um, when people tell me the universe started with a big bang, I say that's true. But as an anthropologist, I want to know what we were doing before the Big Bang, um, and I think it's that kind of curiosity. 
Anthropologists don't answer questions. They just raise more of them. Because we're like perverse kids, you know. Um, and that's what we do. And that's our role. And I think there's a role for that. I think even adults like to read books where they put the book down and they know less than when they've begun. And that's why I had to retire from academia. My students knew less at the end of their degrees than they did at the beginning. And that wasn't, you know, going to be allowed to go on in terms of quantifying knowledge. Mm. Um, you talk a, a lot about the academic world and obviously that's where anthropologists have to start from. Do you think during that three year process of getting a degree that academia can actually knock the spontaneity out of future popular anthropologists? Absolutely. I think when you look at a student who comes into university, they don't have the kinds of questions and problems that they leave university with. Now, some of the questions they have or gain during the time are important ones and some of them are actually distractions or detrimental to the project. And one of the reasons for that is, I, for instance, the truth, you never ever meet a healthy, normal, sane 19, 18 year old who has any interest in the truth. You'll never meet a 22 or 23 year old who is leaving university after doing an anthropology course who isn't obsessed with it. And I think it's that kind of a thing um, is detrimental. The truth's very important, but it's not really interesting and you can't do anything with it and it won't get you a job. Um, I think there isn't enough anthropology to go around. So a lot of it has to be stretched to the nth degree, to breaking point. And a lot of students then believe that everything has to be stretched. Um, I worked with an editor once who defined anthropology as writing at great length about very little. And that ordinary writing was writing quickly about a lot. So, I mean, I think there's that stretching. Mm. Um, I would like to see universities being less interested in exams as an outcome. It reminds me of the buses in Dublin. They're much more obs obsessed with policing a transport system than providing a transport system. Universities have become obsessed with quantifying the outcomes by being obsessed with examining students in case they're committing the hideous crime of not learning the prescribed agenda or even worse reading books that aren't on the syllabus. Um, so I think there should be a lightening up on that. I think my ideal university is 90% of it spent in the pub or asleep um, and 10% of it engaging with interesting people informally and formally. Um, so it is a factory you know, and I think the anthropology in, a, in academia has kind of bought into that in an unthinking and uncritical way. And I think that subjects like philosophy and anthropology and psychology have a greater burden and responsibility in the university to lead the way. It's not a business course. It's not engineering. It's not technology. It's supposed to be about teaching people to reflect on human experience. And the greatest irony is that the disciplines that are all about reflecting on human experience do not reflect on the way in which they do that. They take it for granted that if you get a student to read 900 ethnographies and write about them, that somehow um, it makes a difference. Maybe three ethnographies is enough. Um, so there is over-teaching, there's over-examining, and there's over an over-dependence, um, which I think springs out of an insecurity, which I don't share, you know. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything else to add to the notion of a popular anthropology and how anthropologists out there can make it, make it so? I think if you want to be a popular anthropologist, say be confident and think about your audience and try to gain a huge following. You know, people say, 
oh, the internet is so exaggerated. I said, that's like saying a tap is exaggerated or a bicycle is exaggerated. It depends on what you plan to do with it. Um, you can have an audience and make people jealous that you are a popular anthropologist because people are reading what you're doing or looking at your film. Film is a very powerful medium and I think a very popular medium and can be used really, really well in the anthropological project. So go and do that. Don't be too obsessed with doing the kind of anthropology you taught. I think you need to be mature enough to know that there's a certain amount of perform performance involved in an undergraduate course that you can quickly forget about as soon as you become a graduate. Um, and don't let it overly shape what you want to do. I was always inspired in philosophy by the philosopher Wittgenstein, whose ambition was to stand at the gates of the university. And when someone would come up to him and say, well, I want to be a geographer, I said, the geography department's over there and they'll show you how to get around and how to make maps. And eventually when a student would say, I want to be a philosopher, he would say, well, what's your problem? Tell me, I'll give you the answer and then you can go and be a geographer, you know. And I think anthropology is a bit like that, that students are asking the wrong questions because they're not questions that can be answered. Um, popular anthropology is about having a curiosity and contributing an answer, but it's not the definitive answer. Um, and I don't like definitive answers, as I said earlier. If someone tells me the answer to something, I just decide, no, I don't like that, I want a new question. Um, and it's about remaining um, forever curious about the human condition. Well, I think that wraps that up nicely. Okay. So thanks very much. Thank you. I'm going to say goodbye. 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 Happy um, American Alcoholics Association. <laughs>